All right, so this is the last scene I want to go over with you guys. I'm going to show you how I put this together. And the general idea with how this one was built is I wanted to try and not only um, looping something in space and duplicating it throughout space, but also messing with the idea of offsetting time. So each of these things is duplicated, scaled up, rotated, translated, but it's also offset by four seconds. So in each of these, you see the same animation happening, but even though each one is offset by uh, four seconds, 120 frames, the things line up between them. Um, kind of hard to explain without just showing you how it works. So let's just dive into it. So this is based on the golden triangle, very similar to the Fibonacci spiral. Um, you know, once you do enough Fibonacci spirals, you start getting into harder stuff like the golden triangle. So the way the golden triangle works, it's like similar concept to the golden ratio, but um, it works with like that 1.618 thing is the ratio of these sides. So that is how the golden triangle works and you can replicate it through a spiral um, just like the the last piece that we looked at. So let's dive into this. Let's see how I put this together. Okay, so again, starting super simple. First thing I did, just build the triangle. Get that squared away, or triangled away. <laughs> so sorry. Um, we have your triangle here and then um, basically just figuring out how to replicate this with a bunch of instances. So similar thing. Um, after we have this shape, okay, so I, I took out this chunk here and that's what we're going to duplicate this triangle into over and over and over and it really just works like the other one. So um, in the sense that each of these, you know, it's offset by the exact same amount as the one above it. So that's how I put this together. Just do the math and then replicate it through the whole thing. And then um, it's just a matter of of getting this to loop. So similar thing we have um, in this one, instead of having the camera scaling in a null, what I did was I had the whole scene scale in a null and I found out that that ends up working out a little bit better because in the camera one, when you're changing the scale of the camera, doing things like depth of field becomes kind of difficult because you have to, you know, the, the distance, your focal distance is changing because your camera scale is changing. So I found it was easier to leave the camera where it is and then um, find the center point, put all your scenes in that center point, scale this up. So we're doing a similar kind of thing. You know, we're animating uh, this scale going up here. Um, and again, this is just working out the math. So, you know, here's the beginning triangle is this one. Ending, ending triangle is um, this one right next to it here. So basically we're scaling this up one, two, three times. So 1.618 times three gets you this number, or I'm sorry, 1.618 times 1.618 times 1.618. 1.618 cubed, Jesus Christ, I'm not a mathematician. Um, that gets you to this number. So that's the amount that you are scaling this up. And then I kind of just eyeballed it to rotate and it turned out that it was actually 36 degrees uh, to get to that. So that's the first step is just getting this base animation locked in, getting this so it loops, getting it so it looks perfect and smooth. And um, yeah, now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is getting this stuff to to have that, um, the triangle flipping animation to reveal the next one after that. So um, one of the limitations of instances, you know, in instances are really great, they're really efficient, they can do a lot, but one thing they can't do is offset um, time. You can't chain, you can't offset the time of an instance. So the way you do that is with X refs. So what I ended up doing was sort of rebuilding this whole thing. Um, but I did it with X refs instead of with instances. So it's basically uh, one animation of a triangle flipping. And then, you know, those are all, uh, they're in the same exact position as all these, these instances were, I just built it with XREFs and then offset the time. So to give you an idea of what this means, um, if you look at the XREF itself, frame zero, nothing there. Frame one, it pops in, okay? I'll explain why in a second. So this flips over, reveals two triangles, all right? And then at frame um, 120, that's the last frame, and then it pops off. And that's because when we put the next instance, um, or the next XREF rather, in the smaller scale, okay, we want it to be the triangle. So this triangle is being placed here and it's appearing at frame one, right? But when we offset it 120 frames, 
it's appearing at frame. Um, it's appearing at the frame that it, uh, this triangle disappears. Okay, so when you take this structure, this triangle with this animation, and you put it into the XREF system here that we built with those instances from before, um, you get this kind of animation. Again, so what's happening is on frame zero, everything's here, right? So frame 120, we get to frame 120, okay? That's actually this instance, or this XREF rather, of this triangle. Frame 121, it disappears and now the next one is here, okay? Because this one is 120 frames off. So this one is starting at frame one where, um, you know, it's starting at frame one where it actually appears, you know? So that's how that is set up. So this is the first step, okay? The first step into getting this to be able to get to the point where we can add a lot of detail is just working out this base. So now that we have this base, we can go through and we can add all the detail on top of this that gets us to that really complicated looking scene from before. So what I'm gonna do is show you the steps that I took to build this and to think about how to approach this because this is a really complicated scene. So first what I did, you saw this, get the base going, okay. The next thing I wanted to do is um, figure out how to connect these in some way and also connect them in time. So what I wanted to do was uh, basically I put in some indicators that would help me understand how I can build this out. Um, so I put frame counters on each scene so we can see what frame number each individual scene is at. And then I put all these uh, letter markers so I can get an idea of where things are uh, positionally, so I can have an idea of where to build things and where to attach things. I knew I wanted to get rails going in here somewhere. Um, so now I have all the indicators I need that I can start fleshing this out. Next thing I did was see if I could get uh, the spiral working. So in each, you know, in that one scene, I built a spiral. Just in this one part, I could tell where I needed to, to build it. I knew I needed to build it around the F area. So I, I built this, uh, one arc around there and then just lined it up. I just kind of eyeballed it and went back and forth with the X refs until this looked right. And then I started animating it. So basically what's going on in this is this is just uh, in this one scene, it's just a green platform going on a rail. And when it gets to the end, it actually just goes back to the beginning of the rail. Okay. So at the end of 120 frames, going back to the rail, at the end of 240 frames, going back on the rail. So you can see like every 120 frames, it completes the rail. The next step is I wanted to connect all these things. So, you know, whereas before we had these numbers, uh, or these letters rather, I wanted to figure out how to connect these and, and make uh, rails that connected with each other. So I used those to help me indicate where I would build rails that would ultimately connect. So using that, I built these basic rails here. Um, and then I tried getting, you know, I, I just tried getting this to all line up. I, I made it flip a little too fast. I changed that later. But anyway, the point of this iteration was just to get these rails connected and working. So in this next step, my focus was figuring out how to get these little platforms to go down all these rails and get back to the beginning here. So this, as you will see, is why I named the piece Time Travelers. Um, I think the easiest way to explain this is just to show an isolated section of it here. So what's actually going on um, when you see this platform get to the edge, okay? It gets to the edge of uh, the rail, and then when it's going to leave this scene, okay, on the next frame, so on this frame, on this rail, the platform gets animated off, and on this frame, on this rail, the platform gets animated on, okay? So I'm turning the visibility on here at this frame, at this point in the rail, and then it's going all the way down here, okay? And then this is the last frame that it's on, on this rail. And then on the next frame, okay, on this frame, I'm animating it off. I'm animating a visibility so it's hidden from this scene here. And then at this frame, I'm animating the visibility on at this rail. Okay, and then it continues and I animate it. And then as you'll see, when it gets to the end, okay, the next frame, the visibility gets animated off again at this frame. So all these are happening in the same animation. It's just at different frames, I'm animating the visibility of that platform on and off. So if you watch this just all the way through here, um, this is what the animation looks like for this platform. And then wait for it. 
wait for it at the very end platform comes back on and then it leaves and that starts it all over again so just again just what's going on it leaves here okay and then it, we go back in time to this point here gets there and then when it's lined up with the other one it comes on here so when you play it through you know it plays through like that but then when you put it all together you get this smooth animation and then duplicate it all over the place it ends up looking like this um, next step was to add in some flamingos to see if this was working um, so here we go this is what it looks like with some flamingos on it now um, animation tightened up a little bit you know next thing after this adding a little bit more complexity you know added um some little uh what are these called the things on a railroad struts or railroad ties or something you know adding these onto the tracks um here we go adding more and more detail adding the like these pillars to it you know little tweaks and animation and stuff just adding detail little by little this was the first pass of, of rendering it i was going for a theme of like a roller disco with black lights and disco balls and stuff like that i had this crazy like bowling alley black light floor um and then after trying it out you know this was like a final render i was just like this is kind of chaotic um, it kind of took away, I thought, from the the strength of this this piece, which is all these rails and the timelining up and everything like that. So it was just a bit too much to, to understand what was really going on. So I ended up changing this. Um, just started from from just basics, just using you know wood as something as the background you're not really supposed to be focusing on, and then allowing the rails to sort of pop off of that with some neon lights. Um, yeah, and here's an example. So here's basically what this this final scene ended up looking like. So this is the scene. This is the one scene that's in this whole thing, and it's duplicated all over the place and then offset 120 frames each time it's duplicated. So you can get an idea of how this works if you uh, if you look at this part a few times. You know, just as an example. So like, how about when this uh when this flamingo comes in and stops. So it, it, it stops in there. So let's see, that comes in at 480 and then he stops at 540-ish. Okay, so basically anywhere here where it gets to 480 is when the uh, the flamingo is gonna come in and stop. So here about to get to 480, comes in and then he stops around 540. So that's gonna happen for all of them. So like this one too, for example. So 480, this one comes in and then it stops at around 540 and uh, yeah, it just keeps going and going. So that's how I put this together.